This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and bienvenido to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion. Today's program is about a healthy lifestyle. At the beginning of every year, we select a new year uh, compromise that we want to do is our resolution. And the number one resolution for the 2019 is exercise and eating healthier. Today's program, we're going to talk about with tips and recommendations how you can get it in a good shape. And to help us to do that is our guest, Benjamin Morris. He is a personal professional trainer, and he's the founder of the company Outlaw, Outtrained. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. All right, good to see you. Yeah. So let's start the program. Tell me a little bit about yourself, and also uh, we'd like to know what motivates you to become a professional personal trainer. Yeah. Uh, so about myself, 15-year military career. Uh, during that time, did a number of deployments and also got to do two years as a drill sergeant. So I came, became very familiar with the training world and, and training people. Uh, and after I, after I left the service and moved into the reserves, I went and got my personal training certification. Uh, and you know, through, through the course of getting my master fitness training and my master uh, resilience trainer, I uh, was given the opportunity to go compete in the best warrior competition and was able to win the title Pacific Best Warrior. Uh, and after I did that, I really I enjoyed this act of helping people, of training, of, of going out and working with people. So uh, we stepped aside, founded our own company. Uh, it's done very well. We've, we've worked with a lot of people and made a lot of differences in people's lives. And that's, that's, a, that's a really good feeling down deep inside. And that's to that's to a that. key for any corporation, right? Yeah, 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 to serve people who are, who are in need. Yeah. yeah, but let me ask you some more question here. Okay. I, I always get people asking me this question. Where do they start? Do they have to have a gym membership? Do they require a plan? So how we can get in shape after mm -hmm. the holidays after the holidays uh so let's start with the gym membership one first there's okay, actually been a there's actually been a, pre, uh, a, a a pretty big study done on that where they went through and, and and done gathered up all the data and as it turns out you really don't need a gym membership to be able to exercise you can absolutely exercise at home you can exercise on your own and in the military we've been exercising without a gym since its That's creation true. Uh, so you don't need that membership to be able to do exercise. You can do it at home. So where do you start at? Uh, you start by at realizing where you're at. Okay, you have to be able to stand in front of the mirror, look at you, and find out where you want to improve at, and actually uh, and actually identify where you're at. Um, that also needs to be a social thing. I really encourage that among a lot of people whenever we work together. Is have a good friend, somebody that you trust, that you could talk to about it. So that way you can get that good, honest feed to back, back about where you're at in life. Uh, it, once you know where you're at, identify that start point and then start moving through from there. So, as for your plan, uh, people always overshoot that New Year's plan. That's why they, well, it's, the, it's a big trouble in the community, including yeah. myself. I started with a plan within the first 90 days. Mm -hmm. uh, I lose the motivation. Yeah. So yeah, what yeah. can we do to, this, to well, continue? A, a success. That's what it always comes back to. Uh, you have to succeed on those first few steps. And if you have a plan that has you, you know, a goal that you cannot obtain within the first 90 days or that's way too far out there and you don't have that success in, in the first 90 days, the mind's not going to do that. Uh, so whenever you start the process of setting up a plan, so the brain itself always likes to budget out the energy that it's going to need for the day. That's okay. what it likes to do. It likes to predict. The brain works on prediction. So if you're able to start small, and be able to provide the brain the chance to have, to prepare to succeed at the training that it's going to do, it's a whole lot more likely to do that. So starting out small, starting out small steps, that's where you want to be at. Um, I really tell people to find the processes of you trying to work out. If it means that you have to pack a gym bag every day, maybe you don't get a lot of workout in, but at least you're packing that gym bag so that way you're starting the process. Uh, another good thing that, that another good mm -hmm. technique that, that I found over the years is what they call indulgent theory. Okay. All right. And I want to know about that. You want to know more about yeah. this one? <laughs> yeah. So we know that the brain really likes this one. Okay. Uh, so one thing that people regularly do every time after they exercise, every time after they, uh, after they complete any workout is they go to the shower, right? Of course. That's the first thing you want to do. You just go home, eat, yeah. eat yeah. some more. <laughs> well, and here's the difference between those. 
All right, so indulgent theory says that if I start providing some type of aroma stimulant to my body after an exercise, my brain will start to enjoy this more, okay? So if you're, uh, for a lot of men, uh, recommend that they go get some type of essential oil, an incest, something not food related. So, so you're talking about, you know, I need to relax after workout? You don't is necessarily it, need yeah. to relax, but there needs to be some type of aroma that you identify as this is me, uh, I find pleasurable. I f it makes me happy. And the only time that you have that around you is whenever you're at, uh, whenever you're post workout, whenever you're done workout. So oh, your wow, brain that's... starts to relate the two together. Uh, a good one for that's men. Good. That's good to know. I never heard of that. Yeah, a good one for men is peppermint. Uh, you know, because peppermint's not something that's abundant in the world. It's something that you can actually identify. And if that's just a Mentos or if that's peppermint oil, those are those are really good ones. And for women, a lot of time we recommend a soap or a shampoo, right? But you'll notice that both these. Like you just said, I'm going to go home and eat. I'm going to go home and go eat. Home and eat. Yeah. That's not the indulgent theory that we're talking about. We're talking about indulgent theory. We want you to avoid food in all those categories. But we're trying to just get the brain to develop the habit, to develop the discipline. Well, I think that's out. one of the prominent, one of the bad habits that we have. Yeah. We, we try to uh, not to eat anything. Then mm -hmm. we go to gym, we work out. Yeah. And what the first thing we do, we get home, we eat, yep. sit down, and watch TV. Yep. Yeah, I'm tired. I just worked out, right? Yeah, that's, yep. that's true. We, you did not set yourself up for success. You have to set yourself up for success. If you have not worked out in all 2018 and you're just trying to get back into it right now, <laughs> 2019, yeah, the last thing you want to be doing is going outside and running two miles because your body's going to break. It's well, not I'll try to, to loosen on the baby fight. I still have. Yeah. So <laughs> rather than do doing all that, I have my indulgent theory. I have something that I'm going to find that makes me happy after my workout. I'm doing the process of just laying out gym clothes or packing my gym bag so that way I have it there after. And you can really start out with just seven-minute exercises. Right, just seven minutes of going and doing some type of movement uh, that 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 you find slightly challenging, right? And after you've got that done, then you can start building from there. But you started the process, and after your brain has started budgeting for this exercise every day, and it started to see that this is a habit that it's going to have to adjust to, right? So it's all about habit. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Once you have success, there then you, you can go. move on. Yep. So let, let me ask you, so right. Uh, over nutrition, you know, what mm -hmm. is the balance between nutrition and exercise? Because we, like, like we were talking about, yeah. right, I go work out, and then after the work out, I just eat. Mm -hmm. So, um, nutrition and exercise, want, this want to eat after you, after you exercise, yeah. yep. Uh, so, whenever we, let's go back one more step. Let's talk about set point theory. Okay, let's talk right, about okay? that. So, set point theory is, this is something that's been around now for, about uh, about 30 years it's been out there. So set point theory says that if you regularly eat 3,200 calories a day, which is a pretty big diet, right? That's a lot of food to eat every day, but if you're regularly eating it, that, that food, and that's what you've ate for the last 2018, all these calories, if you've now decided that you're going to go on a diet and you've now decided to change your nutrition and you've went from 32 calories and you've went down to 16 cal 1,600 calories a day, that's a pretty big gap. You know, uh, the guidelines right now tell us that most people want to be around 2,000 calories a day, okay. right? And we have to create that deficit, deficit to have their weight loss. So if we try to, try to go from this 32 to 16, set point tells us that the body is not going to react well to this, okay? So why are you feeling sluggish after you work out? Yeah, it's because your body's in starvation mode. Because the mind doesn't know that you're trying to, to go through a body transformation, that you're wanting it to change itself. Because right. that's, that's the first thing that we do, you know, first thing we want to do, okay, we're going to quit eating. Yeah. And then we're going to hit the gym. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you've not set yourself up for success. That's why, you're, that's why it's eight days into it and you're already off, the, off your New Year's resolution. Wow. Yeah. So let's talk about what plan do you recommend for a person to lose weight? Because that is the number one year resolution yes. in combination with exercise. Yep. So uh, first you need, so there's some lifestyle choice that you've made in your life that's caused you to want to have that body transformation as part of your New Year's resolution, right? If you're not willing to address that lifestyle choice, everything else is kind of for naught. But if you are willing to address it and you are willing to take that on, well, then we can start moving forward with it, okay? So what's the first plan that we, that we want you to do is address, address where you're at. Um, so I regularly walk around, yeah, I have a lot of people who come up and talk to us about, I want to lose weight, I want to lose weight, help me lose weight, help me lose weight. Now, it's great, and I can sit here and have a 15-minute conversation with you about the effects of losing weight. But if your first step is to sit down and make a three-day uh, food diary of what you've eaten over three days, and you come up to in, any trainer. So it's, it's more than diet. just exercise, go work out, it's more than that. So you got to 
include you, the dietitian. There is a combination of both that has so to So everybody's occur. different, right? They are. Uh, yeah. whenever, whenever you start talking about fitness and nutrition with people, you will almost inevitably always come back to the answer of it depends for, okay. a, for a lot of subjects. You know, because everybody, the reason that you are in this position to where you need weight loss, yeah, that's going to be different between everybody. So the answer for how you lose the weight is going to be different between everybody. All right? So what food you, you know, would you avoid to eat, you know, and what food yeah. you recommend for that to eat? Can you put slide number six and number seven? Okay, so uh, some, some foods that we really want you to start targeting and, and try to avoid. Um, a good one to always start with, your first one, is to look, in foods, look at foods in your diet that don't rot. If it doesn't rot, there's a good chance that it's not rot, that your body's not actually <laughs> processing and using it. Oh wow! Yeah, look at, look for foods in your in your in your diet that your body that will actually rot very quickly. Nature makes a lot of really good foods like that, and they happen to be in one-time use containers too, like a banana, an orange, an apple. Uh, a lot of those are one-time use foods that your body that you want to start building your diet program off of. So when when about losing weight, do you recommend to do more aerobic exercise or just lift weight? Yeah. Uh, so, two parts to this answer. Okay. okay? So, if you're starting, uh, for the first two to six weeks of you starting any type of goal or priority system going out here for this, the goal should not be losing weight at all. You're going to have two to six weeks of your body learning to exercise, learning to go through it. Now, once you've got to that point, to where your body has developed good exercise discipline, to where you know the movements that you can do and you know how to do them correctly, the key to body transformation always lies in intensity, right? Uh, I like to tell people all the time that fat loss is a result of breathing heavy. Everybody wants to put, everybody <laughs> wants to put on a sweatshirt. To breathing heavy. <laughs> everybody wants to put on a sweatshirt and go out and run and make themselves sweat it off. Sweat it off. But in actuality, uh, weight loss weight loss occur, occurs from you being able to breathe heavy. Reason why? If you're going out and you're participating in activities, if you're going out and you're doing exercises that you enjoy and you can do with a high amount of intensity, those are going to be the ones that give you the best results. And whenever you're doing those, those are also the exercise that make you breathe heavy. Okay, so yeah, there's always a correlation there between oxygen oh, consumption and, and, and breathing heavy. That's, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you about people who don't want to buy a membership at the gym and want to do some workouts at home. Yeah. What kind of workouts or exercise that you can do yeah. at home? So what, uh, some, some good ones to do is if you have a chair at your house, a chair is a great place to start. So what is exercise? The technical term of it is anything that goes over three METs, uh, METs being a, a measured unit of energy exertion. Okay? So us setting, us, or you laying on the couch after a workout, that tends to be well, the body at rest. Lot. Yeah, that tends to be <laughs> at one MET right there. Okay? So everybody's uh, scale of exercise exertion is going to vary. Right? It's, it's a matter of you applying stress to the body. So can you, at home, uh, with nothing more than a chair, apply stress to your body? Can you sit down and stand up in perfect form 10 times in a row without getting winded? That's a really great place to start. Don't worry about focusing on muscles or the amount of knowledge that you need. A really great place to start is just identify movements that you want to challenge yourself and try to perform those movements correctly. Right? A simple stand up from the seated position to go into correct posture. That's a really great place for, for people to start. Um, bands are another really good home exercise piece of equipment. After I've got the habits, I've learned how to do everything. Bands are pretty expensive. You can go to the store, you can put bands around doorknobs, you can put them around door frames. Uh, you can attach a band to anything. And once again, if I know the movement that I'm wanting to exercise, that I'm wanting my body to learn, right? all I have to do is to use that band to apply the resistance against that movement. And that way, there's some type of, of exercise that's happening there. There's some type of stress going against the body. And that's going to help you start moving in the right direction slowly, but it's going to help you start moving in the right direction. Wow, well, it is so much to do and prepare before you say, hey, let's go to the gym and lose some weight. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you don't have to be at the gym to lose weight. You really. Well, that's the mentality that, that, we, all, people that we all have. Yeah. But we are going to continue asking you more questions so you can give our most recommendations and tips. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Right. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this important message. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, 
your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Uh, welcome back to Hispanic Hawaii. We're here talking about your New Year resolution, about do more exercise and eating healthier. Um, we have a professional trainer uh, here with us, uh, Benjamin Morris, and he's giving us recommendations and tips of what we need to do. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to what we were talking about. We were talking about nutrition. Yes. But also yeah. want to talk about supplements. Because yeah. we, we eat, we eat, we eat, but we have a tendency that before we hit the gym, we need to go to GNC or one of these places that sell uh, supplement and mm -hmm. inhale, eat, do everything that you need to do with the supplement so you can get to the gym. Do you yeah. recommend people do that? So uh, supplementation is not meant to be a substitute. That's one thing that we really want people to, to make sure that they understand. Supplementation is meant to increase your performance. It's not meant to substitute anything in your diet. Uh, so supplements, act, supplement, we'll never tell people not to take supplements. There are, if you're trying to push your limits, if you're trying to go for a high goal, they can absolutely help you do that. Okay. But you need to understand that at no point does a supplement go in front of higher quality food, right? If you're, once you feel that you're going to the store and you know, understand the shopping that's there and you're able to buy your, your highest quality of food to, to help you set up for the best results, then you can start looking at supplementation. But until you reach that point, yeah, don't think that that peel is going to help you get anywhere any faster because that higher quality food that you're going to be purchasing at the store is going to help a whole lot more. So let's talk about injuries. How can we avoid injuries yeah. when you're working out? Yeah, gym? yeah. So um, going back to intensity, right? It, you know, results are results are gained by us tra training with a high level of intensity. But the the piece of that formula that's missing missing is mastery. Uh, one of the things that we like to teach all the time is that mastery, mastery with intensity, that's equals my results. Mastery comes first. So how do we obtain an injury-resistant body? That's one of our big things that, that we train. That's one of the bigger problems. Yeah, have. yeah, and, you, and it's a, it's a backup too because when you're trying to do progress, you get hurt, and then you just like exactly. go right back from the beginning. How can we avoid all that? So train movements. Don't train if that first two to six weeks. Right, train movements. Know the simple movements that you want to do. Okay. And train those correctly. So the way that our body learns, all right, the way that our body, is, the nerves themselves are taught, uh, is we teach our nerves without weight. We teach them how to do simple movements correctly over time. Right. Training itself, training itself is a continuous repetition of a movement with a desired intent of flawless performance. Okay. That's what we call training. Right? There's no time measurement, there's no weight measurement. Mm -hmm. It's this flawless performance of an exercise. And us training our nerves how to do this simple movement flawlessly, that's where we gain our injury prevention. After our nerves got it, to reinforce what they've already learned, now we begin to add weight and resistance and, stre and stress to those nerves. So what is the priority? Is it losing weight? Is it trying to do the exercise correctly? Mm -hmm. Is it gaining so what is it? Because it's so much to know. Uh, it depends. Okay. <laughs> I know, right? Great question. Yeah, with great answer. <laughs> I know. It depends. Uh, you, the, honestly, it's where do you want to start at? Uh, there's not a wrong place to start. Do you want to start with nutrition first? That's fine. Do you want to start with building an injury resistance body first? That's fine. Wherever you want to start at, it's not. It's the right place to start at. Okay. But be honest about yourself about where you're where you're at and where you want to go, right? And make that simple choice right there. Okay, there's not a wrong answer for where to start at, right? But you have to start. Okay, I'm about to give out. I want to know what is a priority. How do they start my priorities? How do you start your priorities, <laughs> right? That's the number one thing that kicked people off of it. We, uh, uh, Warren Buffett test. It's, it's, uh, I've done that with a number of people over there to where, you know, a lot of people, I just don't have the time to be able to exercise. Especially whenever you talk to women about exercise, they, they always relate back to time. I don't have the time. How much time does oh, it take true. for me to get that's results? True. 
So, and, and if you work in too, you know, if you work in full time. Yeah, it, their lives are busy. I got that. And whenever, whenever we take them, we do the Warren Buffett test with them to where we ask them to sit down and write down all their day's priorities, and they think they only have eight, and they come back with a list of 36, Ooh. right? Here's your issue. This is your issue. Do you see how many priorities you have in life right now? This is what, this is what we need to address. So, at, so now that we have this list of 36 priorities, having you go down and shrink it down to five and all that other stuff, all those other 31 that were in there, right? Start pushing them off. Push, Push them off. So that way you're focusing on your actual true priorities. And hopefully, one of those priorities that you're actually wanting to make is weight loss or, or healthier you or addressing one of those issues. And if that's in there and that's your priority and you've identified it, it's now a whole lot easier to stay on that track, right? Well, you're a professional trainer yeah. and you founded the company OutTrain. Yes. I want to know more about your training philosophy. Yeah. So um, OutTrain is actually founded around the idea, uh, or, or, so we address training needs for, for police and firefighter and military personnel. You know, so myself, I'm actually a tactical strength and conditioning coach. So that's who I design people to work for. Uh, it, these people that, that are out there serving our community, right? these people cannot be injured, they can't have down days, and they have to be prepared to walk into a situation to where the rules that apply for everybody else have gone out the window. Right? Whenever you're training an athlete, the athlete has the advantage if he's going to be on some type of competitive playing to where if things go wrong, there's a whistle, there's a stop, uh, there's always an end state. Right? I, it, most people on deployment will tell you about the time <laughs> that the fireball came out of the earth and that there was a, uh, bullets whizzing by their head he's and all those rules of life <laughs> are out the window. <laughs> yeah, right? That's true. Firefighters, have a, you know, firefighters talk about if, you know, the building's burning uh, and it should be able to hold, should it be able to hold, you know, the, the situation and the rules that they have to prepare their body for is, is kind of, there are none. So we try to address those people to make sure that they're ready for, for any situation, prepare them for any situation. Perfect. So, so let's talk about the training programs that you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, once again, tactical, athlet, uh, tactical athletics, we want to train these tactical personnel how to, how to get the most out of their body, how to be prepared for success whenever they go through any type of situation. And it's just setting them up for it. Like we were talking about earlier in the first half of, of preparing your body for success, preparing your mind and body for success. We're doing the same thing for them. The difference is, is that whenever we're setting you a regular civilian up for it, you know, we're gonna talk about how you can maximize your sleep and stress, right? Whenever we're talking about it with tactical athletes, we're talking about people who are gonna be training in situations where they're gonna be sleep deprived, they're gonna be starved, Stress is going to be a major comp compounding factor that they're going to have to address. Um, another really good training philosophy that we have there is our grit and glory, right? Oh. Grit and glory, <laughs> right? Grit. What is it? Grit is the, <laughs> the ability to persevere, the ability to, pe to, to, to push through on it. Uh, a very simple math problem that, that we have up there that we use all the time is that the ability to do hard things leads to the ability to do hard things. Right? Simple True. math. Yeah. Uh, and that's can, what we can try we, to get you, to Hold a minute. Can, can you put in the slide number 10, please? So uh, the audience can follow what we're talking yeah. about right here. Uh, can you do the number 11, please? All right, here we go. We, this yeah. is what we're talking about right here. But uh, you're talking right now about the transformation. Yeah. Okay, tell me so more about So body that. transformation. So I, whenever, we, whenever I stepped out and we founded our com or founded the company, one of the things that, that uh, I wanted to show people the values that the uh -huh. company was actually founded on. I didn't want to have a slide that says, this is a company, that, that, this is the values for our company. Um, I really believe in helping other people. We have never charged a PT failure for, for any of the branches of service. We've never, we've worked with police who have failed. We've never charged those people. Uh, the people who are out there in need, who are, who are out there serving others, who need help, right? There's, come here, we will help you, right? We're, we're there for you. So whenever we talk about body transformation, we're talking about helping those people get back to the level that they, that they need to be at. Yeah, and life pain free. Um, I want to yeah. know more about that. You want to know about I, life I, 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 Yes, that, that Every, applied to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so through the course of a 15-year military career, I know you're a military vet too. The Army does not teach you how to do a lot of movements very correctly. It does not. And we yeah, cause a lot of injuries. After 23 years, right? Yeah, yeah there's a lot, <laughs> now of, I know. a lot of people who can't move their shoulder through full range of motion, and they don't, they don't understand why. They don't understand it, what's causing this hindrance. Um, so just sitting down and taking the time to, pe if you're able to provide people good supervised exercise movement to where they learn to th move through these fields of movement correctly, and that pain that's been bothering you your whole life, right, you can start fighting that off and start pushing it away and rehabbing the muscles around it, it can make a big difference. So 
the, the other one, the, <laughs> the one that everybody in the military I mean, hates, right? That's all we do, Ryan. Run, run, Running, run, run, run okay. right? I, I, curious, 23, you said 23 year military career. At any point, did anybody ever teach you how to run? No, we just say we're going to yeah. run and we just went and run a we couple run, miles right? between four, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so earlier this year I got to go uh, compete for the Army Instructor of the Year competition. It was a great experience. I really loved it. And the class I went, the, the, the class that I went there with was on running, teaching people how to run, uh, especially military running style. Um, so if we go ahead and imagine that, that running itself is just a regular skill, just mm -hmm. as if cooking is a regular skill, uh, it, you have to be, everybody can go back, go home and cook. They can open up something and put it in the microwave and hit go and cook it, right? Uh, but you can't make, you know, some Gordon Ramsay high-end dish. That takes a lot of training and to skill to do. And that's what we try to do with running. We try to take, I get the fact, you have been running since you were two, year, two years old. Yeah, but it's a different way to run exactly. to me a specific goal. And also if you're carrying some gears. It, the human body was built to run. Right? That's why we stand up straight. That's why we have so little hair on our body. That's why our body cools the way that it does. Right? We're built to be endurance runners. So we go back and make sure that people learn how to drive their knee. We to make sure how their foot's supposed to be on contact in the ground, how they're supposed to be leaning forward in it. Now, teaching people how to run, that usually takes a long time to do. People need to understand that it takes about 90 days for you to learn how to run. But whenever you take somebody who found running to be a very painful thing, uh, something that they hated in their life, and 90 days I later... I know many people. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something that, that's, that you enjoy doing because it's not painful anymore, because it's something that your, your body flows through because it was built to do that. It can make a big difference in them. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, static balance. Um, so we know that as far as injury prevention, one of the number one things that we actually see is people being able to maintain their static balance, right? You being able to maintain that agility throughout any situation, that leads a lot to you being able to ha maintain that injury uh, resistant body and that's always what we're trying to build for okay okay that's perfect I know you yeah. have some classes that you offer mm -hmm. uh, and some of those classes coming up tell, tell me about those about those classes yeah uh, is number two or number 13 please mm -hmm. yeah tell me about those classes. Yeah. so uh, pose running pose running is a, that's the running running is a skill that's the class that we work we've okay. worked a few times with military a lot of people Can anybody participate in your classes? absolutely okay. absolutely um, so Pose running, we usually start all in one-on-one -on -one because we want you to learn the first steps right and how to go through those. Uh, and the next one is power building. It's what we refer to as power building. It's not you being able to power lift. It's you being able to have a powerful frame, uh, especially for, our, once again, our police, military, and firefighters. We're asking them to carry a lot of weight on their body, okay? And we want to make sure that they know how to carry all that weight on their body and not and, and to have minimal risk while they're doing that, where to carry it, how to have that good intervehicular frame, be able to support the weight structures, all right? Uh, and stretching, right? Stre stretching is a pretty important. It is. It is. It, 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 flexible positions. Listen, if you're, if right now, if you went all of 2018 and you didn't exercise uh, and you're trying to have those exercise goals right now, just learn, concentrate on your flexibility, concentrate on stretching. That is exercise. Don't let anybody tell you it's not. That's a great place to start. Just getting your body up and moving, let it go through its full range of motion, find the areas which you find discomfort, right? And just start pushing those out a little bit more every all day. All right, thank you so much. Not a problem. Thank you, thank you for coming and oh, give you. us all the recommendation and tips <laughs> so we can get back yeah. and show you. <laughs> thank you. All right, we wanna say thank you so much for watching Hispanic Hawaii. And don't forget, you can watch this program again at ThinkTech Hawaii and many other programs. Thank you, gracias, and aloha.